RTC TV4 would like to thank all of our sponsors for our 2023 Fulton County 4-H Fair coverage. It's businesses like you that help us continue to provide this great service to our community and to document these events for future generations to enjoy. To see what's coming up in our broadcasts, visit us online at www.rtc4.com.
If you're competing in any of our showmanship shows this morning, could you guys come up to the table and tell us what class you're in? There's a little bit of a mix up. So if you are wanting to show in showmanship, please come up and tell us. Please come up and see Candace. If you are doing showmanship, 
Even if you did a stair entry, please come up and tell us your name.
looking for one more exhibitor for the next class. One more exhibitor.
together for this group. They've done a great job. These young men are outstanding. Um, talk to each one about their uh, their strong points and this and things I'd like for them to fix. Uh, to make sure that you keep the goat in between you and I. That's that's the main thing. When a couple of these young men came in and they had the eye right on me, and that's what I love. I love that intense eye contact. That to me, that's where. Um, it lets me know that they've done this before and it's so critical they know where I'm at at all times. Sometimes I can kind of be sneaky and get in behind one of you before you see it and I'm standing right back of you and the goat's on the other side. I want to make sure that we stay uh, with that goat in between us. They've done a great job. I'll shake hands with the champion reserve and so forth, but let's put our hands together one more time for these young men did a great job. Junior Showman goes to Drew Douglas. Next in the ring is our intermediate JR2 class, intermediate showman. Senior Showman, you need to be getting ready for ringside. Senior Showman.
But let's put our hands together one more time for this young girl. She did a great job.
put our heads together for these three. Great job. Really tough trio out here. When they walk in, they give that good eye appeal. Uh, they, they know what the goat uh, is like. We talked about each one of them uh, with the young person, and they presented them well, uh, making sure that eye contact is there. Uh, we're looking uh, for the most of the best. This is where it's at. This is senior showmanship. And uh, it's really exciting to have three out here that is this tight. Uh, Placing them is, is really hard because they have such a good idea of what their animal is, plus the others that are in the show ring, and then their overall knowledge. But then presenting their goat uh, the best that they can is really remarkable. I'll get your champion and your reserve. But let's put our hands together for this uh, fine group. Did a great job. Champion Senior Showman goes to Grant Clark, who will return for Master. We have three exhibitors for Master Showman. Tina is going to be posting a paper on the board up front by the gate for goats that need to be put in the sale. You'll need to put your name and your tag number of the goat you're wanting to put in the sale. You have to have it in before the end of the show today so we can get that to the office. Again, if you are selling a goat, we're about ready to post the list. We'll need the name of the exhibitor and the tag number of the animal you're selling. If you are not on that paper, you will not sell.
you want beginner, junior, or intermediate showman, can you come up and sign the thank you card for your award? Beginner, junior, intermediate showman.
So we're going to start with this young man uh, to, to start off this class. Did a great job with this young doe. Uh, this doe just comes out with a lot longer front, more correct in that shoulder. Uh, it hits right there in the middle of that rack where it needs to be. And that shoulder point is more correct compared to the rest of the class. She's longer, she's more balanced throughout. Just a really nice doe. Uh, the doe comes in second. This one it just gets a little shorter coupled in that midsection. With the length of the neck, it kind of gets around balance just a little bit. And we'd like to see uh, a little more correct uh, feet when she gets around the ring, but still a nice ribbed animal, really deep body, uh, just like to change her those points. And then the young lady's doe to round out the class. Uh, very small in stature, but uh, still a nice female. Very young, and she'll catch up down the road, but right now she's just a little steep in that rump. And we know that in the uh, dwarf world, that tends to be a problem for everybody, but still a nice female. Let's put our hands together for this trio. Did a great job. Thank you. Junior kids born after April 1st of this year. First goes to Caleb Viger, second to Samantha Jacobs, and third to Lainey Hill. Up next is intermediate kids born March 1st through the 31st of this year.
want to pair up here to start this class with. We're going to go with the young lady who's got this black uh, Nubian cross of some sort. Uh, but one that is ideal. Uh, if they, you see that front end, that motion of that shoulder, that's where she excels over to. She's more correct in that spine, more balanced, lower body, lower hip, wider in that pin set. Extremely nice female. Thank you for bringing her out. The Dota comes in second. This is one I liked as soon as she walked into the show ring. But she gets just a little coarse in that shoulder compared to our class winner. Maybe not as long spine, but super powerful in that hip. Uh, I'd like to maybe make her a little longer body, but still a nice female. Gokta comes in third. This is one that's really long spine, long fronted. Uh, we just need to look at that maternal look more than what she uh, has compared to the two that went out. She might be just a tick younger or a little more immature made, but still a really nice female. I'd like to fix her up, give her a little more width in that pin set to move her ahead. And as we look at the trio on the bottom side, this is one that's really deep body. Really like the long spine, the long hip about her. Out of the dwarf side, this one just is more balanced and correct throughout. Nice job, young lady. And as we look at the pair that runs off the class, uh, they just get a tick out of balance, not as correct on their feet and legs, they're a little fine bone, but still two nice females. Let's put our hands together for the entire class. Did a great job today. Thank you. First for that class was Amy Williams, second Emily Viger. Those goats will return for the champion class. Next class coming in is senior kids for January 1st through February 29th of this year.
not a lot of separation between these first four, but these first two are outstanding. Uh, this lady comes in and just commands the ring. She's long bodied, deep in that chest floor. She carries it all the way back to that nice maternal wedge, long fronted. Uh, that muzzle is perfect. We're looking for the overall, the best of the best. This here just gives me a really good look on the move. That shoulder just disappears. It's really fluid. It doesn't piston at all. And it sits right in that pocket where it needs to be. And she is the widest hip thing I've seen all day. So congratulations. That's a nice goat. The goat that comes in second. To me, she was not my obvious second, but she definitely worked her way up. She's really long body, uh, long fronted, balances up really nice. Tremendous width in that hip also. Uh, we know that she's a dwarf and she doesn't have that size, but for her breed characteristics, she's right there in the hammer. And she is really nice throughout. Congratulations. The goat that comes in third. Uh, this is a very nice female also. Long fronted, long body. She just doesn't have that uh, width that we see in that pin set. She wants to kick that uh, right rear leg uh, out just a little bit when you see her set up. She wants to bring that hock in a little more we'd like to see, but still a nice female. The goat that, the goat that came in fourth, another good female. Like I said, there's not a lot of difference between these four. This here gets just a little more refined in her makeup. She's long body, she balances up nice. A little refined in her, in her bone work, but she just doesn't carry that width all the way through. And the maternal uh, look that we have in the three head is just not here in this one, but still a nice female. And as we round out the class, uh, very nice goats in their own right. We just like to see them a little more balanced throughout and that maternal look as a dairy goat. And I know they're, they haven't started milking yet, but we're still looking for that uh, maturity to kick in, but still a nice set. Let's put our hands together for all six of these young people. We did a great job in this class. First for that class went to Kaylin Viger. Second went to Kylie Hazelby. They will return for Champion Reserve Champion Junior Dairy Doe. Next class coming in is Champion Reserve Champion Junior Dairy Doe. The first and seconds from all the classes will come in together.
Well, this is our first division drive, and we have a set out here that's really nice. We really like what we see as far as the young, all the way back to the older ones. And there's a couple in my mind because this is the bill for me today. The ones that are the most complete, that overall dimension, size, and yet that maturity is there. Uh, whether it be young or old, we're looking for the most of the best. I'm going to shake hands with your champion and your reserve. But let's put our hands together one more time for this division. Did a great job in these other classes.
definitely the most challenging class. Let's put our hands together for these exhibitors. They did a great job. As we analyze these coaches, that when they come in, we're looking at that shoulder, we're looking at that spine, we're seeing how smooth they are when they're walking in, and then just that overall composite animal. The goat that wins really does it quite easily when you analyze this female uh, from the front end all the way through. She's the most balanced, she's the most correct, she's the long spine, she's right in that shoulder, and she is definitely the widest in that pin set. Really, uh, if you remember anything from last year when I was here, that pin set is so critical in the goat world. Whether it's dairy, pig meat, boar, does not matter. Uh, we find more times than not that that pin set is narrow, and when it narrows down in that canal, that birthing canal, that's where the death takes place when she's trying to have kids. So really, we're looking at the balance of that hip and that overall width from the hip to the pin set, uh, I know in the cattle terms, it, it's hooked to pin, and so that pin set should be as wide as, as that hip is. And when that pin narrows up, that's the restriction, that's the last problem for that baby to come out of. And what it does, if we pull that pin apart, it also corrects the hawk. I know when I started into this years ago, my background's actually hogs. My wife is show cattle, and we settled in on the goat, so there you go. But we still wanted that hawk to be right, and this is actually at the pin set. No matter how much trip, uh, uh, hook trimming you want to do, it's not going to fix that pin set or fix that hawk. That pin comes out, it sets apart, that hawk will straighten up. That's where it's at. It's from the spine down. It's not from the feet up. And so that, if we wipe that pin set out, that hawk will be more true, and this goat has the truest hawk. Really appreciate this animal. The good that comes in second, the second most balanced animal in the class. Is she the longest? No. Is she the widest? No. She is the most balanced. She's correct in that front end. She's smooth in that shoulder. Where we'd like to picture that pin set also, but she carries the overall correctness and balance like our first place. Congratulations. The good that comes in third. This is one that gave me probably the most trouble. When you see that front end, how long her neck is, she gets short coupled from that rib back, and that pin set is really steep. We like to pull that pin set up. She's too steep in that rump. But this is one that is heavier bone, uh, got a big wide nozzle. We just like to fix her in that her muzzle. Uh, we like to fix her in those areas. Because it comes in uh, the last, she's the largest trained animal here. We know that. But she doesn't carry that balance. She's really long front. She gets short coupled in that shoulder area. And she does carry a very wide uh, hip, but again, that pin set could be wider and just a fixture with that overall balance, but still a nice female. Let's put our hands together for these four did a great job. First place, like you can
kind of changing gears. We're looking at the phenotype and in the score part of my mind there's the, you know all the other classes have been 100 percent phenotype. Now we're going 65 points with the uh, phenotype and 35 on the mammary system. And so when you when you look at your dairy scorecards, uh, the, these need to have freshen or have had babies and they're they're milking out right now and I do ask how much or uh, if they're Breaking the room, it's going to the babies, whatever it's going to. Uh, we just like to see how many pounds or how many, however many gallons y'all get. Uh, but the one that wins the class with the overall points is the one the young man brings in extremely nice through that front end. Long spine, really uphill, really like to see or how, how deep she is, and yet the battery system is in full, full more. Really like the attachment on the front and the rear. Uh, maybe we can make this, that discussion a little higher in that in that high setup but still a nice teeth size nice placement uh, we're looking at a very complete goat congratulations goat that comes in second this is one that's also physically correct balances out nice maybe not the mammary system that we see in the class winner but one that is definitely uh in production we, we like the teeth size if we could have a little more rear under that side uh, that would definitely uh, make it a little more competitive in this class but still a nice female and as we run out the bear on the bottom side, this, these goats are nice made. Uh, they're complete in their, in their uh, composition. We just like to see that memory system more full, more complete, and definitely in production. But still a nice step. Let's put our hands together for these goats that are doing a great job. First, went to Kayla Viger. Second, went to Chloe Conley. Up next, Milky Doe, three and under five.
What a nice pair in this class. And that's not taking anything away from the three on the bottom side. It's just the completeness of this class winner is just overwhelming. That front end length, the overall uh, length of spine, how correct she is in that hip to pin ratio, how true she is on her feet and leg. And still, uh, I think she's uh, freshened three times now. That other attachment is full front, rear, the scutcheon is full, the deep place is good. Really good go. Thank you. Go to comes in second. This is one overall, also a very nice body type, uh, depth of body. We just don't see that fullness of that rear udder. We like the scutcheon to be a little bit higher and more full uh, in that udder, but still good deep placement, good under feet weight. Uh, just a really nice female. Congratulations. Go to comes in third. Also, one that is fresh and twice. We would like to uh, comment on the overall body type she is. Really long fronted, long body, nice and complete. We'd just like to make that udder a little more full and that teeth placement a little more correct. Still a nice female for this young man. Did a great job showing her. The goats come in uh, fourth and fifth. These goats just don't have the memory system today that we're looking for. That's a lot of points when they're not milky. And the one that rounds out the class, uh, we know that the kids uh, did not make it, so it's hard to milk them when the kids are not there. But still a nice set of five. Let's put our hands together for the senior note class. Did a great job. First one's at L.A. Viger, second to L.A. Viger. First and second from the last three classes are now coming in for Grand and Reserve Champion, Senior Derry Doe. spot to get in this breeze. Man, I'm going to stay down here.
together for this group. This is your overall grand. Earlier when we was talking about the junior division, we're looking for the most of the best, and that goat just brought so much to the table. Uh, overall balance, smoothness of shoulder, completing that spine and that hip. Uh, just a really nice female to me. She just uh, is a very complete package. And it's been real exciting for this young man once she uh, gets out and freshes and what is down the road for this, this female because she is so good right now. And then you look at the, the milking side, the one that has been uh, in the barn now what, three times. She's kitted out, freshened, and uh, just extremely nice, the Nubian look that overall shoulder, the, the long body, the balance, the overall composition just has the most of the best in that division. And when you're uh, comparing apples and oranges and, and you look at both sides, uh, there, is, there is not a lot, a lot of difference when we look at the phenotype and where we're at in their maturity program. But there is one that excels over the other in my mind when you look at the feet placement, the overall hip the width and that bend set, what we talked about all day. Uh, we're going to use the older note to be our grand overall, but we are going back to our junior with our reserve grand. Great job. Congratulations all of you. Sir. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Dairy Doe goes to Emily Viger. Reserve champion Dairy Doe overall goes to Caleb Viger. Up next, we're going to have Dairy Dam and Daughter.
So this is your mother-daughter class. Let's give them a nice round of applause for coming out today. We're looking for an excellent mother to throw a kid that is as good, if not better, than she is and throw those good quality traits uh, that she has and then bring it to the table for her, uh, her daughter. And we know the buck has a lot to play with this, uh, but we're still looking for those good traits throughout that uh, the phenotype. And the one that just does it for me today is this middle pair. It'll be your champion overall. And then your reserve is going to be the uh, Nigerian horse here on the bottom side and our third place on the front side. Just a really tremendous set right here in the middle. Congratulations. It's going to be your champion pair. Let's give them all a nice round of applause as they exit the show ring. Great job. Champion Dairy Dam and Daughter with the Caleb Viger. Reserve Champion Dam Dairy Dam and Daughter with the Kinley Reynolds. Up next is a new class, Dairy Produce of Dam. We have one entry.
very interesting. This is your Guinness Iron class, and then you have a three-year-old, and then you got your juniors uh, from a different female, but the same sire, all three of these. And you can definitely see the likeness in, in the three that we have out here. Of course, the sire producing uh, this amount of quality, and no matter what female they're coming out of, did a great job. Congratulations. Let's get a nice round of applause. This will be your chance here today. Champion Get Up Sire for Dairy goes to Chloe Conley. We have the results of our milk competition that the kids milked out last night. Our champion milk competitor went to Emily Viger, and our reserve champion went to Chloe Conley for that competition. That concludes our Dairy Goats. We're rolling into Market Goat class next with Dairy Market. We're going to break this first class up into four different heats. We'll keep the top two of each heat.
uh, probably the youngest also, but we would like to see just more mothers in throughout. Nice set to start off with. Let's put our hands together. You guys have done a great job. Next four coming in, lightest weight is 41, heaviest is 59. Young man, you're going to win this class. 
He has the most product for the weight that he is. Yeah, let's give him a nice round of applause. He's excited. I asked him if he was going to sell this goat, and he kind of got frowned. Yeah, I'm going to have to sell. And the young lady right behind said, yeah, I'm going to have to sell. Then get to the older ones. Yeah, we're selling them. They're gone. <laughs> The younger ones, they have that sentiment about them that they just, they're losing their buddy and it's just like, ah. but then you grow up and then the fun's gone, it seems like. No, that's not true. It just, it's a different project. You do it, it's okay. But this young man, really nice, complete package. The shoulder lays in nice, big loin about it, and he has the least amount of waste for the product that he has on the top side as well as that hind leg. Congratulations. And I'm glad you're excited about it. Great job. The young lady, you did a great job also. Really low spine. We just see a, a little bit too midsection, too much waist. Uh, and I have nothing to say about that because I'm a little wasty in my midsection also. So that's just the way it is. But we just need more product on that top side to get over this first place. Go, still a nice animal. And as we round out the two, these are uh, bigger, uh, no doubt older animals. We just need more muscling on that top side, as well as that rear leg that you can see too. But still a nice class. Let's put our hands together. These young people did a great job. The first and second places from each heat are now coming in to compete for champion reserve champion Jerry Weber, weather overall.
right up there. We'll put that gun in the second place hole. Now this to me where it gets a little uh, stiffer in competition, but the one that still brings the most product with the least amount of weight, young man, you're going to be our reserve. Congratulations. Good job. Let's put our hands together for all these exhibitors. Nice job today.
Really nice set of goats out here, but this pair is at the top of the class. A young lady brings in this blackhead, definitely the most natural muscle throughout. Uh, you get this goat uh, in your hand, and he is the widest in the withers, the rack, the loin, the hip, the hind leg. Just has a tremendous amount of natural muscling, and definitely the th thickest in that loin. And you get right in behind him, he is definitely the widest in that rear leg, and he carries that twist a lot deeper as we see in our second place go. Really like the feet and legs on this end hole, so very correct, uh, especially in that pastoral set. When we look at the second place go, this one that is heavy muscled also. Maybe not the natural that we see in our class winner. Handles just a little bit shorter coupled uh, in that, from that 13th rib back to that depth, but tremendous amount of width throughout. We'd like to make uh, fix him on those rear pastures make him more erect there. He just doesn't have enough rear inner quarter that we see as our class winner, but still a nice and functional goat. And as we round out the class from this point down, we're seeing a lot of midsection waist and just overall muscling on that top side that we don't see uh, compared to our class of one and two. We just need to make more, we need to get more muscling on that top side as well as, the, as, well as that rear leg, but still a nice set of five. Let's put our hands together. They did a great job. Next class coming in, lightest is 71, heaviest is 81.
but it's nice to see these two young men come out, and, and I wanted them to see what I was seeing. Would you go ahead and turn your coat that way for me? Uh, when we look at these animals on the profile, uh, we see the balance, the overall maturity about them, the muscling, and the overall rack. But once you get your hands on them, there's an extreme difference. The, the amount of rack that we see in our class, whether it's the loin, the overall width, the depth, and then you get right behind that rear leg is tremendous. What I told the young man I do not like about this goat is the way he's wanting to come off those back legs. But with this amount of muscle in him, we just got to keep that product uh, in view because he's got so much good about him, we can't get away from that muscling. The goat that comes in second, really love the spine in this one. He's elevated through that front end. He gets just a little uh, off on those shoulders, and so we're weighing them out over our class winner versus our second place goat. We don't see near the rear leg muscle in the second goat that we see in our class winner, but still handles nicely, really wide throughout. Just need more product on that top side to our class winner. Still a nice pair. This kind of breaks for me right here, the, the goat that comes in third. We don't see that natural muscling in that top side or that rear leg, but still, uh, he just needs more time at the feed bunk. That's really all it is from this point down because the the, the rib fill is not there, he's not finished, he stops about the seventh, this is about the sixth, and that one's about the fifth. So we want that product on that top side as well of that finished product. Just need more time, that's all it is. Congratulations, let's put our hands together. A really good class, top and finish. Last heat coming in for for market, lightest is 85, heaviest is 113.
I said, this is our heavyweight class. The one that's nearest me is going to win this class. You get your hands on this fella. He is extreme from that wither all the way back to that leg. Uh, enormous in the top side. Really like the finish all the way to the 12th to 13th rib. He's definitely the longest from the 13th rib to the hip. Just the overall balance, I feel he's got it all right now. Congratulations, that's a good go. Nothing that comes in second. This is the, the one that I really like the front end, how smooth he is, but he carries it so wide uh, throughout. He lays that shoulder in tight. We're seeing a lot of product in that midsection without the muscling that we see in our class winner, but still there's a lot in there. This boy is heavy muscle. We just need more width and length from that 13th rib back to that hip. Still a nice go. The gun that has the most power in that front end is the one sitting in this third hole. We just don't see it carry on back all the way into that hind leg. We need more product on that top side, but we really like the muzzle on this fellow and the way that he presents himself coming into the ring. We just need more of that hind leg. Congratulations. The two goats on the back side, we just need more time and more feet. I hate to say that when it's a heavyweight, but they're not finished yet. And sometimes we run into that problem. They, they have a lot of uh, meat muscle about them, but not enough to win the class. We just need more product on that top side. It's still a nice set. Let's put our heads together so you can do a great job today. First and seconds from each heat are now coming back in to compete for champion and reserve champion for weather. tight competition out here. Let's put our hands together for these exhibitors. Did a great job in this weather class. We're looking for the most of the best. Uh, least amount of waste, just the overall product. Uh, and I still want them to be functional in the feedlot as far as uh, getting out there and walking and, and getting the most out of, we, out of what we have in front of us. And whether uh, you're in this front line or in the line behind, uh, there's eight animals out here that are exceptional. Uh, you know, you go a lot of places without finding this amount of quality. So, really, hats off to all the breeders out here and all the ones that are fitting these animals and just a tremendous amount of product here. But, you know, when we look at what we have here, we have to go back a little bit and then think about how we got here. There's a group of uh, military personnel that might some be in this class or in this barn. Would, if you're in the military, would you raise your hand? We'd like to say thank you for, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Let's give them a nice round of applause. You know, just thank you. I uh, really appreciate the freedom that we have here in America. And I don't know if you all can tell it, but I feel like we need to be more patriotic. Uh, I love my country, I love the state of Indiana, and I love this 4-H pro uh, program that we have, uh, but it takes a lot to keep it going, and I thank the Lord that we have 
uh, the freedom that we have to be able to show our ghost today without people telling us that we can or can't do it. Uh, I just like that we have men and women that has fought for us. For all of your military, thank you so much. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart and glad for your service and thankful that you gave all that you had to our country. So uh, we really we really appreciate uh, the, I know we're not done, but I appreciate the ones that are working behind the scenes to get these animals in and out. They've done a great job. Let's give them a nice round of applause. They've done a good job so far today. Really appreciate all the work. And if you've never done it, if you've never sat on a board or been behind there, do it a couple times and it'll make you appreciate what they do. I've been there, done that, and it's a lot of hard work without a lot of notoriety. So thank you. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, they told me to get a grant and reserve out of this bunch, so I'll shake hands uh, with my grant and reserve. But let's put our hands together one more time for this fine group that did an outstanding job. Well, this is the only class of females on the weather or on the market side that we have, but uh, the one that wins it doesn't quite easily. Young men brought in a goat that's extremely wide throughout, extreme in that muscling, uh, just overall top is just explosive with the least amount of weight. Congratulations. This also will be your champion on the female side because this is the only class and this is all we have of that division. So, uh, champion and then the reserve, the young man that comes in second will be reserved. We just need more product on the top side without the, without the waste that we see in the center section. And so on the market side, we're just trying to find the most and the best. So this is your champion and your reserve. Let's put our hands together for these two. Did a great job.
champion market go, no, goes to Aiden Smith, reserve champion with Dave Hagen Halstead. We're going to bring in the champion Dairy Weather, champion Boar Weather, and then the two that just exited, competed for staying in the market go for grand overall. your overall drive when you start analyzing these goats on the on the profile you see a couple that in my mind just comes to the top very easy i'll set the mic down uh, and go shake their hand but this is a great project for these young people who've done an outstanding job let's put our heads together one more time as we get your overall champion Market Coat goes to Andrew Douglas and Reserve Grand Champion Market Coat goes to Aiden Smith. That concludes our Market Go classes. We also had a Rate of Gain award to give out. Rate of Gain for 2023 went to Amy Williams with her Dairy Weather. 36 pounds total with a .58 pounds per day of Rate of Gain. So we have two graduated seniors this year, and um, the girls are just really special. They're hardworking, they care about the project, and I'm just sad to see this era come to a close, but I want to give them a little gift of appreciation. As you spend the summer, you can work that off. But um, I want each one of them to just tell you guys what they're doing in the future and a piece of advice that they leave the younger 4-Hers as they continue on with their career. So I'm going to Indiana University of South Bend to speak louder. To have a degree in business and then a minor in urban development. And so advice is always where you go more than you think you should, and then don't have an attitude that you're going to walk way worse than me. I'm going to be attending Ball State and planning on getting a major in tourism and a minor in anthropology. And the advice I have to the younger yeah. 4-H or to the goat is just try and spend time with your goat. You don't have to walk it every day, but just try to be around it, it will get familiar with you and 
less chance of it dragging you across the show arena. While the judge is judging this class, we have people coming back in the ring. For those who won an award in the first part of the day, if you've not turned in a thank you card, we really need them. We've only had a couple of them turned in. We also have a few kids that haven't signed a sale affidavit from the office. If you're selling, Carson McKee, Kylie Hazelby, Keegan Kaufman, if you're selling, please come up and let me know. If you're not, come up and let me know.
really nice set of eight out here. Let's put our hands together. These young people did a great job getting the show started. The goat that comes out in this first hole, she just does it really quite easily for me. When she walks in, that front end is so smooth that she's carried a lot of width. You look at the muzzle, uh, we, we love looking at these heads that are right. From the nose to the pole is a certain length, and when you get your hands on them from that point of uh, the withers back to the 13th rib, 13th rib to the hip, hip to the pin, uh, all the same length. That's what I love about the poor goats. And this is what we call balance. This goat balances up so nice. And yes, she's uh, she's feminine through that front. Yes, she's bold in that rib, really stout over that top. And she's by far the easiest uh, winner as far as the overall width when you get your hands on her. She's extremely nice in that uh, hip to pin ratio. She's spot on. Really like this animal a lot. Congratulations. Good that comes in second. A really high ability animal. Really nice through that front. Maybe that take more bone even. But she just doesn't balance up like our class winner. She gets just a little short in that hip to pin. But when you analyze this goat, when you handle her, she puts, she puts up that nice competition to this class winner with the overall boldness of that rack and in that point, we just need to give her some more length uh, when we look at that hip side. The goat that comes in third, this is really a nice long animal, nice long front, long hip. Uh, and actually, I had her in the second hole for a while until I seen her walk on those rear pastures. We need to strengthen those rear pastures to get her above are one and two, but still a nice functional female. Goat that comes in, actually, uh, the fourth and fifth, these goats are made a whole lot of light. They're, they're, the composite is good till you get to that hip. They're too uh, narrow in that pin set. They want to uh, drop that pin set when they reach out and motor around the ring. We just need to elevate them. And to round out the rest of the class, these goats just come to us with a lighter package of bustling and not the overall balance as we see them uh, walk around the ring, but still a nice set. Let's put our hands together one more time. Thank <laughs> you. 
know you start analyzing these goats when you get them on the move and when you stand still. And, and as you see that motor around the ring and the goat that comes in first, once you get your hands on her, she is the most explosive right there as a wet wither package. And then you come back, she even gets wider in that loin. Really appreciate uh, just how uh, naturally bold she is throughout. Her front end is not overwhelming, but it's as wide as anything in the class. And she doesn't really catch your eye at the beginning, but once you start analyzing her, uh, to me, my opinion, I guess that's what counts today, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I never thought about it like that, but it's the way it is. She's the best girl in the class, and I really like the way she's put together. She's complete, she's balanced, she's right. Great job. Go to come to second, a little larger package, but she is also very smooth in that shoulder, elegant the way that net comes out of the top of the shoulder. Uh, we would call that thrifty. She's got a big old uh, forehead about her, and she carries the proportion right. Uh, we just don't see that natural width in that top side as we see our glassware, but still a nice, highly functional goat. Congratulations to both of these. The goat that comes in uh, third, uh, really like uh, how stylish she is, but she doesn't have the spring of rib or the overall length of loin or the width of loin that we see in the ones up above her. So this is one that is just in a, a, a very compact package, and I like to see some more length to that hip to balance her out with the rest of the package. And here's probably your show note of the class, but one that just is too short coupled all the way through. I'd like to give her some more length of rib, length of loin, length of hip to move her head, but still one that is functional in her own right. And as we round out the class, these goats just get really green to the touch, not a lot of muscling on the top side, but just need more time uh, to mature into that package and maybe uh, uh, fix a few things down the road with the hip and the way that uh, they're carrying their overall balance, but still a nice class. Let's put our hands together. This is a really good set today. Thank you. First and second place from that class that was just in the ring come back because this is the second heat for the same class. Gage and Carson, if you can come back with your six and nine month dough. Gage and Carson, come back with your six and nine month dough.
looking at the same age that was in the previous class. This is just a remainder of that. Um, the coat that uh, comes to the top in this second division uh, really just puts a lot of things together for me in my mind. Actually, all of them I'd like to change a little bit, but this is the one that is most complete uh, today in this, in this arena now. I uh, love the way that she's extended out of that front, top of the shoulder. Uh, that neck comes right out of the top, and we love that about her. She's really smooth that shoulder. Uh, maybe give her a little more length in that hip and make her not a steep front, but still a nice functional goat. And the same way with her second place goat, this is one that gets, uh, bounces up the first two thirds. Really like the way that shoulder lays in, but I'd like to give her some more length into that front, uh, I'd say the hip to the pin, and, and bring that pin set up just a tick, but still a nice goat. The largest frame goat in this class is the one that sits in the third hole. She just comes at us in a lot of pieces. That pin set is really narrow on the back side. She's going to hawk in quite a bit. But this is one that is extremely nice over top. Just not a lot of muscle shape throughout, but still a nice functional doe. And the two that round out the class, these two are come at us with a lot narrower package. Uh, still functional animals. We just need to have more product on that top side to move ahead. Still a nice set. Let's put our heads together for these five. Great job.
uh, front end, there's still no, so we're, we want that feminine look, but still maintains that uh, overall muscling, the muscularity that goes into these animals. I was talking with the young people earlier, and they came into the States in 1993, and I actually spoke to the family that these war goats came in through Canada, down the west coast, and they were not in a goat, they were actually embryos that was in a rabbit. And they were brought into our United States illegally back in 93, and they ended up in Texas. And now the American war goat is the number one shown animal in America. There's more shows, more numbers than any other, even over dogs and cats. And I don't show dogs or cats, so it doesn't matter. Or even over horses. The, the war goat is the number one shown animal around the world. The only thing that's coming closest to it is the miniature herfords. They're coming up in numbers quite a bit right now. And for me, when I look at these war goats, and they can come at us with this amount of muscle and, and uh, structure and just that overall eye feel that we're looking for. There's a couple in here to me that has just uh, brought the A game today, and I will shake their hands for their champion and reserve champion. Well, let's put our hands together for these four. They've done an outstanding job in this junior drive. Champion Junior Bordeaux went to Gage Richard. Reserve Champion Junior Bordeaux went to Carson McKee. In the ring now, yearly Bordeaux, class 6, 12 months old to 16. The rest of the classes are going to go extremely fast. So kids, if you have helpers and parents, get them lined up in the order of the class. They're going to go really fast. You have won a banner or a showmanship if you're still around. The Sentinel is here to take pictures as soon as we're done. Like I said, classes will go fast and then we can get pictures done.
seven goats for the ring. Seven.
tough to see uh, just how much quality we have out here all the way down because these bodies are long. There's a, there's a lot of goat out here in each one of these. But to me, the one that's got the most of the best young lady right here in the pink. Uh, this, this goat is tremendous in that front end. She's lean. She's really nice in that shoulder. You see her move around the ring and that shoulder is non-existent. It is so smooth. And, uh, and she's got nothing to cover up. I mean, there's, there's very little fat on this goat. She's extremely bold in that rib shape as well as that rack and into that loin. And where she excels over two is right there in that pin set. She's as white as anything in the class when you analyze that hawk all the way to the ground. She's extremely bold throughout. Congratulations, that's a nice goat. Goat that comes in second, this black. This is really a nice female. I'd like to trim some fat off of her, to be honest with you. She's not as wide as you would think that she is once you get your hands on her. And where she doesn't give up that power is right here, what I'm looking at right now. That hind leg, that hind end, the pin set is a little more narrow than our class winner. I'd like to pull her apart and give her some more true natural muscling in that rear leg, but still a nice female. Goat that come, the ghosts that are uh, a little heavier right here in this third hole of this goat is really wasty as far as condition. I'd like to trim some of that off of her. Once you start handling this goat, uh, she gets narrows up quite a bit on that top side. Uh, she's got a lot of hair, but she's got a lot of conditioning on her. You can see the, the jiggle when she walks around the ring. I'd like to make her uh, a lot leaner and give her some more muscle expression throughout, but still a nice complete animal when you analyze her uh, from the front to the back. Goat that comes in fourth, this is one that comes out of a very long package and she is trimmer made. That's why she's in this fourth hole. She's long body, long featured, long in that hip and very good on her feet and legs. We just need to widen her out. She's really long but we need some more natural width. The one that probably gave me the most problem was the one that's in this fifth hole. Uh, this, uh, yeah, and when we look at this goat, She's extremely heavy conditioned. I asked if she was pregnant, they said no. So when you look at how much condition this goat has on her, it's hard to read her. But once you get your hands on that top side, it really disappears. She's not as wide all the way through as the ones ahead of her. We just need to get some more width and dimension, as well as these two here that round out the class. We just need some overall muscling throughout. But I do want to commend all these young people that's in this class. They all had a safety chain on their goat, and I hope we can see how much easier it is to handle those goats as well as get them around the ring without them screaming and hollering. I recommend the safety chains wholeheartedly because it is better for the goat and it's also better for the handler. And so thank you for having the right chains on the goats. I appreciate it. Let's give them a nice round of applause. They did a great job in this older class. Thank you. Okay, next class is going to be the drive for champion and reserve champion yearling Bordeaux. So we need the first and second from class six and class seven.
Grand Champion Yearling Bordeaux went to Bria Rensberger. Reserve Champion Yearling Bordeaux went to Madison Douglas. Class 10 coming in the ring. Bordeaux 24 months old to under 36 months old. Class 10 coming in the ring, Bordeaux 24 to 36 months. Class 11, need to be ready at ringside if you're not in the ring. This is a really a, a, a nice set out here. Two of these have kitted and two have, or three is not. Uh, we really recommend that when you get to that age of two that they have already kitted. We've had a nine month old at our farm kid and be just fine. She had all by herself. Nine month old, that's what she kitted. What's neat about these animals is that they will come into the maturity around four or five months of age. Now pygmy goat, They'll be two months old and be mature, ready to breed at two months of age and pick me well, which is crazy. But it can happen, but there's also a lot of problems when you breed that early. But the longer you wait to have babies with the Borgos, the longevity is erased. You will not have that goat very long if you wait to have babies out of her. We recommend 18 to 20 months they should be dropping kids because the longer they wait also, the fertility starts plummeting after the age of two. So the fertility leaves and so does longevity. These goats are made to be bred. They, they're, I know they're, they're animals, we love feeding them, but it's a waste of time and money when they're not in production. We've buried too many because we get them too fat. I know exactly the problem. Uh, and, and we have taken different viewpoint at, at our farm because you get them too heavy, this goat is actually kitted, but she lost the babies. You wonder why if the canal uh, was so small that the babies didn't make it, I don't know the story, it doesn't matter. But once we start seeing the fat on the outside, the inside is already full. The boar goat was produced or manufactured or made, developed in the 1950s in South Africa. And what a lot of people don't know here in America is that they were made to pull. The boar goat is the most powerful animal on the planet, pound for pound. They have more pulling power than anything out there. 
has anybody ever been drugged by a war goat besides me? We all have, haven't we? I mean, you get hold of it, and they will rock your world and make you pay for it. It hurts, and they don't stop, do they? They don't care if there's a fence. Uh, I still remember my wife being ran over by a war goat. She came out to see a new animal, and she was just got out of the shower. She had her uh, the towel on her head and everything. I'll stop her. No, you won't. Ran right over top of her. She had to take another shower. The fact is, these animals are made to pull, and we baby them. We don't put them in production like we should. We should use these animals to our benefit. Yes, we love them. They're our animals, uh, but they are most healthy when they are in production. They are happier when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and they love pulling. Get a cart. Have fun with them. Uh, go in the snow with them. They're not afraid of snow. They they love the snow. So we have our babies, and they go out in the snow, and they play in it. It's not going to hurt them. But yet, we love them. We keep them indoors or heated barns, blah, blah, blah. It's crazy. We're, we're spending a lot of money for no reason, and they would rather be used than set and just eat feed. Okay, I got rid of that one. Okay, now we go on to this class. This girl right is very nice. She's kitted out. She still has the most muscularity throughout. Is she a little heavy conditioned? Yes, she is. But she's the widest and true over her top, and she's the most correct into that hip, that pin set, and into the hock. Congratulations, that's also a nice goat. Goat that comes in second. Long fronted, long body, long hip. I like to pull that pin set up, make her a little more level in that rump, but still a nice, functional goat. Love the design about her, just need to give her some more width and dimension on that top side. Nice out. Congratulations. And it kind of breaks right here. We just we need some more width all the way through. I hope we can see that our does are long, tall, but we need more bone and more muscularity throughout. Still a nice set. Let's put our hands together for this group. Really good all the way through. Next up, class 11, Doe is 36 months and older. Well, this is a 36 and older, and the one we start with, uh, to me, just comes in really easy and wins this class. That big old long head about her sets up a really nice long body. Then you see the width of that eye set. You can tell so much about a goat just by looking at the head. And when she carries that natural width of that eye all the way through, uh, she just dominates this class very easy. Young man, this is a nice goat. I mean, a very nice goat. Congratulations. I'd love to have 50 of them at the house. We would have a lot of fun. I'll take 10. But 50 too many hooks to trim. <laughs> when we look at this animal, she's what we're looking for in a mature goat. Congratulations, that's a dandy. The goat that comes in second, she's long bodied, but not as long as our class winner. She's wide, but not as wide as our class winner. She's got a nice front end. Not as nice as our class winner. We'd just like to give her some more length and width. It should be right up there with her, but still a nice functional goat. Same way with the goat back here. She's getting a little more brisket than I'd like to see on one, but she still lays in a really nice shoulder. We just need to give her some more length to compete with the two above her. Still a nice functional goat. Let's put our hands together for this trio. Great job.
Next class is going to be the drive for senior Bordeaux. outstanding show for me today. Uh, from my standpoint, when I was a kid and to the hogs, we really looked at the females more than we did the, the boars. And when we got into the cattle, we looked more at the, the heifers and the cows more than we did the bull. And it's just been all my life around the females that are the production animals. So those are the ones that we looked at. Now what we have found out that with the cattle as well as the goats, if you want a nice udder, then you gotta look at the scrotum of the bull to manufacture those udders that you want. In the boar goat world, uh, anything that is three teated on either side, it's a cull. So you really want to pay attention to the buck that you're using to make sure that you get good functional teats on those females that you want. That's why the American boar goat industry has changed the split from two inches down to one inch in the scrotum. It does matter. Uh, if you've noticed in the Nubian world, going back to the dairy side, a lot of the Nubians have got an udder that's very funnel shaped tight because the testicular uh, bucks that's been used, uh, they're very uh, long and they're not put together very nice and that comes from the buck. So what the, what the bulls have been doing for the cattle industry or I guess the people have, they've been measuring the testicles for years, decades on the, on the cattle side. And why we're not doing it in the dairy goat world or even in the boar goat world is beyond me because it plays a direct correlation with the udders that is produced on the young females. So we need to take a look as an industry to make sure that we get it right. And you know, in the dairy world, one teeth per side, that's it. That's the standard for a dairy goat. Two, it's a call. It should really be the same way with the Borgo. One per side, and if we can get that right, uh, we could have a really good project out there. And I know two is permissible, but I'm going to have that single, single teeth per side. And so when I look at these animals, uh, it plays a lot into how I look at these uh, young females versus the older ones. 
and there's just a lot of things out there that we are doing right and I love looking at goats that are marked up, that are spotted, that are painted. Back when we got into it, they were totally different registers. Uh, if you was a paint goat, you had a total different registry than the traditional. They wasn't even the same category. And in South Africa, when they was developed, the goat that won the division in that yearling would have been knocked in the head and thrown in the weeds. Because they would not allow a paint goat to stay alive because they carry negative genetics with that color. The bites off, blue eyes, uh, bad teeth, uh, bad pastures, all that negative uh, genetics conglomerate together. It's crazy, but it works. it's just the way it works. And so now, because we are in the Midwest, we're in the greatest state, when you look at the national champions, we're 80% coming from Indiana on the national level. So there's some high-end goats in Indiana, and we got to see some today right here in Fulton County. And I am so thankful that we can see this quality this high, uh, whether in the young or the old classes, doesn't matter to me. And so we like pretty in the Midwest. We want our hawks pretty, we want our cattle pretty, we want our goats pretty. We love that pro. We love that splash. And so it's down to the Borgo, and I think we've done a great job getting rid of those negative genetics. And uh, we just really appreciate uh, how much work has gone into this. I know we got a few more classes after this, but I do want to say thank you to everybody that uh, has allowed me to come back. And I enjoy uh, judging the, the livestock world and working with the young people. And I just like having fun out here with all of you. And so it brings me great joy every time I get an invitation to come to a county fair and judge it. Uh, it, it just thrills my heart to be able to walk out here and hopefully impact the life for the positive and give some information that will help you make good decisions down the road. In saying that, uh, in brief, I do want to thank not just our military for the freedom that we have, but also our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. So. I give him all the glory and, and all the thanks for how he has blessed my life. Uh, we've, we've been uh, more than happy with everything that he's given us here. And I'm glad that we live in a, in a free America, that we still can talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll get your champion, but let's put our hands together one more time for this young group that's done an outstanding job. Champion Bordeaux goes to Hagen Halstead. Reserve Champion Bordeaux goes to Bria Rensberger. Is there anybody wanting to compete in four dam and daughter? Did anyone want to compete in four dam and daughter? Say something now. Champion Boar Dam and Otter goes to Grant Clark. Next in the ring is Produce of Dam. We have two entries. We need a final call for if you are going to be in the sale. If you have not put your name on that paper that was on the front board, come see Candace at the table. Final call for you to be selling a good on sale.
thank you to all the kids that enter the new classes. I'm about to get a sire in the produce and dam. Hopefully we see some more kids next year with it.
let's try this. You ready to do it again? Can you bring your gun? Let me hold on to it. That was fun.
I, before I pick the winner, thank you all for having me. I've had an enjoyable day. I've had a lot of fun. Hope uh, we found the right go with the right uh, uh, individual. But thank you so much for having us. And we appreciate uh, everything that's been done behind the scenes. Thank you all, the GOAT Club, the GOAT leaders, the GOAT members, the GOAT everything. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Making this job easy for me. Let's give them a nice round of applause. And again, thank you for having us. RTC TV4 would like to thank all of our sponsors for our 2023 Fulton County 4-H Fair coverage. It's businesses like you that help us continue to provide this great service to our community and to document these events for future generations to enjoy. To see what's coming up in our broadcasts, visit us online at www.rtc4.com.